Hello, my darlings. How are you guys doing? I am on time today. I just waited a few minutes to wait for some of you guys to kind of, you know, trickle in before I came on here to say hello. But I actually started on time today. I know. Um, anyway, this morning wasn't that exciting. I just caught up on my emails, which I I noticed way too late yesterday that even though I had uh, read all my emails yesterday, I didn't get a chance to actually respond to all of them. So I responded to all of them this morning, took a look at the time and was like, I should not start editing right now because I will be half an hour late to my stream again. <laughs> So no, let's not do that. Let's just chill and start streaming. Um, but yeah, I'm I'm in a pretty good place right now. I'm I'm feeling really good. Um, and just I don't know. Good things are happening. Speaking of good things, I wanted to make a quick announcement. I have the go ahead to make this announcement, but you guys will see the post come out later. Um, I am doing my first official Flute Center meet and greet, like the first official official one. I We had a somewhat unofficial one um, back when I was visiting the Flute Center um, in New York um, in like 2021. So I, I had a very unofficial one, um, but I didn't want to meet that many people at that time. We didn't make it super public because um, one, COVID was still, you know, kind of scary back then. Um, and also the other thing too was uh, John and I were not in a great place then. Um, his skin was still really bad. And at that time, his skin was actually um, so that exact week that I was in uh, New York, his skin was actually going downhill again into the second large flare of this whole situation. So his skin had gotten, had been sort of shocked into getting a little bit better um, in the month that we stayed in Toronto right before that. But um, his skin was actually going downhill actively in the week that I was in New York. So thankfully we didn't do a like very public meet and greet. Um, I did a very private one where I just like um, personally invited my students who are around that area to come in, um, you know, like meet up and hang out with with me. Um, but this is my first official public meet and greet with the Flute Center at the Flute Center booth at the Seattle Flute Festival. Um, that will be on, I believe it's April 14th. Um, yes, so April 14th, Sunday um, at uh, 2 p.m. Um, so I'll be there. Um, I'm just putting this out there, not because like, I, actually, I think most of you guys who watch me here are not even in the Seattle area or even in the US. Um, but I thought I'd put it out there because I got the go ahead. So um, we, uh, yeah, so it'll be my first official one. Uh, we do plan on doing um, other official, um, like public meet and greets as well. Um, but uh, we, we're still in that that's still in the planning stages, but this one is set and ready to go. So again, I will be at the Seattle Flute Festival Flute Center booth at 2 p.m. on Sunday, April 14th. Um, so I oh, I should probably put the Seattle Flute Festival um, link in the bottom bar below. I'll also put it in the chat here. Uh, so um, I probably won't get swarmed by fans because let's let's face it, the flute world is very, very small. Um, and I actually prefer it that way because that means that I can have some actual awesome conversations with people um, when they come and hopefully hang out and talk with me. So um, I'll put this here right at the top. Uh, I'll be at... Uh, the Flute Center uh, booth 
at the Seattle Flute Festival Sunday, April 14th at 2 p.m. Um, oh, my goodness. At 2 p.m. Okay, there we go. Um, okay. Hopefully that lets me save. Yes, okay. So I put it in the video description below. So yay, doing my first official meet and greet, official like public meet and greet. And it's a long time coming, but you know, I've had a lot of life happen in the last 10 years and especially in the last two and a half, three-ish years. So, you know, long time coming, but at the same time, I think that this is a good time to for it to happen because I feel very comfortable in my own skin finally and I feel that I think being in this state of mind is the best for um, meeting you guys in person <laughs> Jack goes on tour yeah um you know we would love to um but yeah uh, a lot of stuff is kind of in the talking uh talking planning phase right now so I don't really want to say much about it but this is the one that is going ahead. So yay. Um, but yeah, I want to say an official hello to Victor, Pauline, Vlad, Michael, um, Jorge. I hope I'm saying, I, I am saying your name correctly, right? Welcome back. Um, Eric, hello. Uh, <laughs> adoring fan from Skyrim. <laughs> um, yeah. So Oh, I'm glad that you went and and uh, comforted your your school teacher. That's really sad. I'm um, all the best to your teacher. I'm so sorry. Hey, Deanna. Hello. How are you? Um, I just announced that I will. I'm doing a public meet and greet at the flute center booth at the Seattle Flute Festival Sunday, April fourteenth, at two p.m. So yay! We can all be nerds together. So anyone who's in the Pacific Northwest, I'll be there. Come and hang out. Uh, 2 p.m. at the Flute Center booth. Uh, but yeah, that is kind of my my fun big announcement. Let's get started. Let's open up the flute. Um, yeah, music school is a lot to handle, Michael. Um, but it is. I, I will again put it out there that um i don't think that um it's heroic or anything to make it through music school because after you get out of music school you're still yourself um you learn a lot of things but i think fundamentally who you are doesn't change um and you know, like, I think, um, at least previously, when I was much younger, I used to sort of glorify um, people who like, made it through music school. And I was I used to think to myself that like, ah, yes, we are the strong who can make it through music school. But I don't, I don't think that anymore. Um, it's, it's just whether or not music school is right for you. There's really, you know, like, it, is it beneficial to your path in life or is it not beneficial? That's really it. Um, because if you go into music school and it does absolutely nothing for you, wasted time. Wasted time, energy, you know, et cetera. So... Oh, if only you still lived in Seattle, only 30 some years too late. Oh, <laughs> I wasn't here in Seattle either 30 some years ago. <laughs> um, so Jorge, you're currently doing lesson plans for your music education courses while watching me live. Fantastic lesson plans. So are you, are you a teacher, professor, something like that? Um, thanks for um, allowing us to keep you company while you do that. That's awesome. <laughs> oh, 
Oh, okay, to be fair, at least I existed some 30 some years ago. <laughs> I existed. <laughs> Wasn't here though. <laughs> all right, all right. Let's, that was tea. That's maple tea. So we're just going to rinse out my mouth with this. And we are going to get started. Okay, there we go. I got everything out and ready. I hope you guys are insanely proud of me. Look, everything is ready. Unlike yesterday, where I had nothing ready and I was scrambling. <laughs> uh okay just scooching my foot pedals back here um your music education major in university fantastic jorge fantastic um what kind of what kind of things are being planned in your lesson plan i want to hear all the nerdy things copano hello welcome back Did I make you feel slightly less ancient? You're welcome. Um, I, I, I think what's happening right now with me is um, I, I, I definitely have the Asian baby face. So I am aware that a lot of people don't know that I'm 30 something years old. <laughs> uh, <laughs> Um, like some people who, who have just started watching me, I think a lot of people think I'm in like my late twenties, maybe. Yeah. I think late twenties based on how I talk, but no guys, I'm in my thirties. <laughs> Almost mid thirties. <laughs> okay. Anyway, let's start practicing. Pano, I'm glad that you enjoyed my my chat yesterday about music school. Yeah, I I'm actually surprised that I haven't told that um, that uh, I'd like talked about that experience more. Um, maybe because I I guess I wasn't really ready for it until now. It's taken me a long time to think about it. It's been I think when that happened more than ten years ago um way more than 10 years ago <laughs> my master's was already 10 more than 10 years ago <laughs> um but yeah it's taken me over a decade to kind of like really reflect on what happened um how i got to that point and um how i've gotten to where i'm at now you know um, there's been a lot of kind of like back and forth thinking about how things worked out and stuff. Um, Michael, I, I have to say, I don't have, uh, experience. I don't have the education, um, to make the judgment of whether it's hard for special needs students to learn an instrument. Um, I, I, I don't 
have that education. So I'm sorry that I cannot give you a any sort of useful opinion um, there. But um, there are lots of special needs people who do play instruments. So there's nothing preventing you from learning and having fun. That part I know. But in terms of your question, which is, is it hard? I'm sorry, I, I really do not have any sort of educated or useful information there. But as always, you are so welcome to just hang out with us and just be a nerd with us, <laughs> as always. Um. <laughs> yeah. No. You know what? We didn't actually get to making the rice. John was too hungry, so we had shin ramen. If you guys had shin ramen, it's Korean, uh, Korean spicy ramen, um, and it is fantastic. We hadn't had it in a really long time because John's skin was not good enough to be able to like withstand that amount of spice, but he can do it now. So we had a great time. We're going to make rice today. <clears throat> See, Pauline is much more experienced with this. I, I know that Pauline is more experienced with this. So um, there you go. That That's Pauline's answer. Um, yeah. Um, so Jorge, you're doing uh, field experience and observation hours in a middle school band and you have to do lesson plans of your observations. That is so cool. That is very, very cool. Oh, Man, that's, oh, that, that is extremely cool. I, I did not go down the education path. So I like hearing about this type of stuff. That's so cool. I feel like I, I, in a way, I almost feel like based on what I like, I probably should have done education, but I was stubborn and went down performance, even though y'all can see, I don't really do a lot of performance i do more things that are more education based <laughs> oh such is how life turned out for me you know that's why i say that you can go to music school and like yes it can improve what you know it can expand your knowledge it can it can change you in the sense that you are more educated and you kind of like know more of what's going on, etc. But you as a person in terms of what you like to do and what you don't like to do, music school does not change you. You're still the same person. So you can be like me and go in for a performance and not come out performing. <laughs> you know. Um, okay, so let's move on to De La Sonorte. Here we go. All right, I do want to explain to people who are dropping in for the first time. So these are interval tone exercises. Uh, with, we're jumping from a bass note to every other note in our range. Today's bass note is high G. <laughs> Yay. Um, we're gonna first tongue everything and then we're going to slur in groups of two from the bass note to every other note. All right, let's do this.
all in all better. Um, and I think I was o overdoing it in the top half of the middle register. So I just want to do that bit a little bit more. I'm a little bit more precise with it now. So now we're going to slur in groups of two. Okay, I can feel now how to relax the lower lip in order to retract it. I can feel how much to relax it and also how to relax it in such a way that actually retracts instead of rolling inward. So we're making very good progress there. Um, I'm very happy about how that's going. Hey, your froggy flute on the Discord channel. Hey, excellent, excellent, excellent. Um, are you in the general chat? Did you did you put did you did you did you? Okay. Uh, is it under? Did you put it under flute dojo? No, no. I, okay, okay. I'm guessing you haven't yet made your little post about like the stretches and stuff. But take your time. I know how long it takes to do that type of thing, okay? But uh, welcome to our Discord. And for anyone else who wants to join, exclamation mark Discord in the chat. Susie, hello. Welcome back. How are you? Um, Discord. Yeah, so y'all can just hang out with us anytime. Um, You haven't yet. Okay, no worries. Take your time. I know how long it takes to make a post like that. <laughs> I'm very intimately aware with how long it takes to make a post like that. <laughs> okay, we're going to continue on with circular breathing. Okay.
very welcome, Michael. Um, okay, it's not bad. I it's definitely I'm still feeling like I need to um I need to convince myself to do the inhale. So that that part is still taking work, but you know, that will take time and it's okay. It's okay. It, w it will come with time. Okay, let's move on though. Let's move on to Moise, 480 exercises. Um, we are on number 33. Okay, wonderful. Oh, I will update my practice checklist here to uh, articulation number three. Okay, so now we're on Moise. Uh, we're doing number 33. 33 is, ooh, okay, a very long, uh, a long, long boy. Okay, so 33 is A flat major. Okay, here we go. <laughs> So uh, I am noticing going up to the highest one, I'm retracting my lip way too fast um, as I'm descending. Um, and then the other thing is in the low notes, I just have to make sure I stay really consistent with how I slide down to the C sharp key. So uh, I'm just going to try maybe like the second half of this again. So, um, uh, that was definitely better up on top, keeping my lip out, um, so it doesn't drop, uh, it doesn't crack low. Uh, but I think it's right after that, I have to get used to, um, relaxing my lower lip, 
um, by the time I get into the lowest notes. So I do want to do the last line once again. about as good as we can do it yeah so Deanna you're probably going to end up making two posts one for the hands and wrists and then one to help release tension in the face neck and upper body Ooh, very helpful Michael thank you so much for saying that that's so sweet uh, what's a typical break in period for a new flute? Susie is asking, how can you tell when the flute is broken in? From what I, what has been told to me, uh, approximately six months of regular playing. That's what was told to me. Six months of regular playing. And I did kind of feel that because uh, in my experience of breaking in this flute when I first got it, um, it the whole flute kind of, it, it almost sounds like there's like a muffler on it. It's like slightly muted. And then after six months, you'll notice that you can really kind of like the sound sort of blooms and blossoms and like the sound opens up um, and it feels great <laughs> when that happens. So um, like one thing you could do is um, just to make like make sure that it's like super fresh at the six month mark you can get the head joint cork replaced because it's super cheap and fast to do that um, or to get a technician to do that. Um, and then that way everything is sealing really, really well. And you can tell if it's like really just like super open and responsive, you know? Yeah, I hope that was clear. Um, but okay, we are now going to do the Eber. Um, we will do um, same as yesterday. Uh, in the development section, we're going to do compression exercise, uh, alternating, um, alternating ways uh, on on this section here, and then we will play as written, and then evaluate to see whether we want to do it again as written. So here we go. This is helping with. Um, evening out my fingers. Better than yesterday, so I'll take it. Okay, we're gonna move on to the to the recap. Same-ish thing, but from the end to the beginning.
Were those notes thicker than the steak you just had for dinner? Oh my, my, what a compliment. Thank you. <laughs> uh, I, I think you guys can tell I'm getting used to my flute again. That might actually have been a bit of a what if I overdose last week. So I, I'm actually kind of curious to see um, what happens to me in other reviews as well. Um, so I, I, I might really have to kind of go back to my, um, you know, how I used to do it. However, I, I do need to squeeze in uh, another review um, this month so I can return all this stuff to the food center. Um, uh, but yeah, um, I might have to kind of like reel it back in to uh, like once a month uh, reviews just because like, <laughs> ooh, it did, it did a number to my offer sure. <laughs> okay, I'm doing it as written. We will continue moving back. Oh, I do see I'm at the half an hour mark. So I think I will um, uh, give myself a little bit longer of a break. Oh, so not bad, not bad. I'm feeling more myself. The tone is clearer um, and like, it, it, yeah, like I, I, I feel like I'm familiar again with what I, how I normally play. Shoulder tension check. Okay, thank you. Ooh. Ooh. Um, it feels, yeah, that felt really good. That felt really good. Um, I was looking back at my streams from two weeks ago because I was getting some footage for the review for this guy. And um, that's when I, I heard myself there and I was like, I'm so much more comfortable there. And then I listened to myself last week, well, like my streams last week. And I was like, I think it's pretty clear that I was readjusting back to my normal, um, my normal embouchure. So. Um, I don't know. I don't know if I will do um, a meet and greet in Toronto. Uh, that's not something that I can make a, a decision immediately. Uh, that there's a lot of planning that goes into that type of thing. Um, so it's not off the cuff. Um, I have to consider um, security. I have to consider um, like the the place I have to consider. There's a lot to consider. Um, so, uh, you know, it turns out that the Seattle Flute Festival, I think, is a, is a really good starting point. So, hey, don't apologize, Midnight. How are you? I hope you're doing really well. Um, were you, 
were you reading some very riveting information about the Rite of Spring? Did you did you read about the riots and the the gyrating and the and and all that stuff? Were you were you did were you reading about that? <laughs> oh my gosh, oh, that was you know. If people, like, if you think about how up in arms some people are about some, like, music these days, like, no, back then, they straight up, they straight up rioted. They straight up rioted. Yeah, yeah, all the rumors and controversies, yeah. Like, um, I think, unfortunately, the music world, the classical music world, at least, has a very long history of being very gatekeeperish, um, very uh, like we we tend to idealize um, old ways, old and traditional ways of doing things, and we kind of see them as perfect and immovable, and um, having already you know achieved perfection, there is no need to evolve. And I say we because I definitely used to think this way as well. So um, I, I'm, I'm just as guilty of this. Um, but I think it's important to realize that as humanity, as, as, as like, um, as humans, I think that we always, we have an innate desire to evolve and to try new things and to discover new things. Um, and, but people get very uh, comfortable with the traditional. And so when something, um, uh, when something is put up on the stage or something like that, or just put out there publicly that um, can threaten that sense of comfort um, in tradition, it can make people crazy, like writing at the, uh, the, uh, I believe it's the, uh, the debut of Rite of Spring. <laughs> you would have been part of that, right? <laughs> yeah, it, it's, it's kind of funny. Like if you, it, it, funny in a like very jaded way. Um, if you look at our history as musicians, as classical musicians, my God, the, the attitude that we tend to have when we glorify things from the past has been around since the beginning. We have a long, deep history of glorifying the past. How ironic is that, right? Yes, the, it, Deanna makes a good point. The gatekeeping goes both ways a lot of times. Exactly. Um, and I think the gatekeeping is um, that, especially the fact that it goes both ways, is really what causes such a huge rift, I think, between so-called traditional music and so-called new music. Um, and it's a shame. I like both. So. You were very shocked. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I'm glad that you took some time to read into it. Okay, I can see that about six minutes have passed. So I think that's a pretty good break. Let's keep going. But keep talking. Keep talking. Keep chatting. I would love to continue this conversation.
Jody, hello. What's this about the Seattle Flute Festival? I am doing my first official public meet and greet at the Flute Center booth at the Seattle Flute Festival on Sunday, April 14th at 2 p.m. Yeah. So if you're in the area, we'd love to meet you. Anyone watching, um, you know, would love to meet you. So you guys should see a post uh, about it coming out soon on my social media, but we're waiting for that post to come out because I want to uh, share the official one from Flute Center. Um, have we played down tuning to closer to 432? I think the only time I've done that, um, and it probably was actually closer to 415, was um, when I played a bit of Baroque flute in music school. That was great. So mellow. <laughs> it's wonderful. Yes, 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 Jody. <laughs> Let's see. So Midnight, for you personally, you just love modern art as long as they don't turn out too lazy or extremely minimalistic and boring. Like that one piece that consists of sitting in front of a piano not playing. Oh, um, four, four minutes and 33 seconds, right? Uh, <laughs> I mean, it's interesting because he's playing the audience. That's essentially what he's doing. Um, I find that interesting, personally. The idea that you can play your audience. Uh, so the audience is that, like in, in my interpretation of that piece is that the audience is actually the instrument. It's an interesting concept. I like these weird concepts. <laughs> you guys are great. Okay, let's play this as written. Probably the cleanest I've ever played it and it feels the most easy too so yes this is a good way to continue practicing we're good we're doing good
mind is going well. There is definitely still some parts where my brain's like, huh? That feels so good and I can I can envision it feeling even better. Ah, I understand. Um, so Vlad, you don't like the desire to shock and provoke. Um, that, that in that that seems to be what the rite of spring is doing. Yeah. Um, I can totally see it being a preference thing. I can I can totally see that. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I'm reading about like what Midnight Moth is writing here. Appalachian Spring with the Boston Symphony at the front of the stage, eight ballet dancers where I'm guessing you have more to say there, Jody, that you're probably typing more. Interesting. <laughs> the French kind of asked for it. <laughs> um, I always, you know how people like, essentially it, 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 it I mean, the Rite of Spring was basically like clickbait. Like it, it was, it was, well, maybe not clickbait, but like it was shock value, like shock value content. You know, you know how shock value content does really well. I think it's always done well. 
you know? Um, <laughs> I think that facet of humanity has, has always been there. Right. It's, it's interesting. Do I like making shock value uh, content? No, I just I don't have I don't derive any joy from doing it, um, but I am aware of it. <laughs> this is a very interesting discussion we're having here. I love it. I love it. OK, we're going to do um, some rapid as wildfires. I think what I'll do here is just go section by section and try and not look at the music. We're going from the end to the beginning. A little bit of struggling to remember what I'm doing, but it's there. take that. Gonna move on back.
very slightly surprised that I am remembering all of this. We're going to go back up one more section. Uh, are there flute teachers out there who can teach special needs uh, students? I'm sure there are. I, I just don't know them personally. Yeah. Uh, you, yeah, you might want to do some Googling, actually, like what Vlad is saying. Uh, okay, we're going to do another large section. Let's see, where's a good spot? Okay.
Thank you for the water. Hey, excellent. I'm glad I seem more at ease. I'm still I'm just trying to remember what, what I'm supposed to do. Yeah. You're welcome, Michael. Okay, we're getting somewhere. We are getting somewhere. Um, uh, I'm glad that we have been working on this because, uh, yeah, this has really been challenging, like, my flexibility and um, I need clarity of tonguing. Um, all, all the things that um, I think I previously have always thought that I could never do. Um, we did it. So, excellent. It is time for me to clean up so that I can have an adequate lunch break. Um, but thank you guys. You're, you guys are so kind. So, so kind. Thank you. Yeah, I think this is going to get better and better with memorization. Um, uh, I, as you guys can tell, I already kind of like mostly memorized it before, but I took a little detour to like get all of my technique down. The tone, the breathing, the um, lip manipulation, tonguing, um, all those things need to be like very precise um, in order to pull this off. So um, yeah, I think out of all of the Genshin tunes I've done, this is definitely the most um, uh, challenging. Um, it's and and I love it. I love it. Like being able to do it, it just it feels so good, so so good. You're so welcome, Michael. Um, 
Hey, Alexander. Welcome, welcome. Um, and we're here to remind you that you are awesome. Thank you so much for dropping by. Thank you, thank you. Uh, you're welcome, Victor. Um, oh, demonstrate it again. Not a problem. Um, so let me first uh, do the other, my other, whatchamacallits here, these guys. Um, I, I'm, I'm going to do these guys first. Um, maybe what I'll do is I'll do this so that you can see a little bit better what I'm doing. Um, and in fact, maybe what I can do, um, uh, give me a second. This is going to be a little bit jank, just a little bit jank, but this way you can at least see my, my facial expression <laughs> as I do this. So, um, we're just going to first take apart our instrument. Then we are going to, I'm going to do my pass through first of the, uh, foot joint and the body, um, because that's super quick and very, uh, there we go. Completely bone dry. I don't know if you guys can see that. Yeah, there you go. Bone dry. Um, setting it off to the side because personally I need to um, wipe, uh, wipe down the keys and the tube. Uh, all right. So there we go. That is also completely bone dry. As you can see, no condensation. Yeah, you guys can see that. No condensation whatsoever. Oh, it's so good. So, so good. Okay, so what I do is I take a corner. Uh, so uh, that's a very damp corner. So let's, let's, use, let's, let's use a different corner. So we'll use this corner. Um, I, uh, I just kind of like, I take the corner and I put it down my, my index finger, have my index finger kind of like in the corner like so, like that, okay? And then I stick that bunched up like this into the head joint. So I stick it in. Now your finger can only go so far in, but then you've already stuffed that corner in. So I will take the rest of it and I will keep stuffing it in, keep stuffing it in like this. Um, and then when enough of it is stuffed in, I will take my cleaning rod and then I will stick it just in here so that I can push the rest of it in. And then you can see it, it has now appeared up in the top. So a lot of times I like to kind of like take out my cleaning rod and then continue stuffing it in. I might choose a different portion of it to stuff it in so that it goes all the way up to the top. And then I will start twirling it. So I think you guys can see it. Yeah, you guys can see it kind of turning in there. So the reason why I turn it is because um, it, I'm not sure exactly how it's bunched up up there, right? So if you turn it uh, quite a few rotations, then you can make sure that um, the bunched up cloth will hit every, um, every part of the inside up there. So we're doing that. I do it quite a bit just to make sure that we've hit every nook and cranny. And then moment of truth, take it out. Yep, and it is bone dry. You see that? Yep. So that's how you do it. Um, it, it doesn't touch, you can't touch the cork because as you can see there, it, the cork is glued to a metal plate. That, that metal plate up there is what you're trying to get at. Yeah. Yeah, there you go. Yeah, it, it is a fantastic swap. So Eric has this as well. Excellent, good, good, good. So we are going to um, do this. <laughs> so give me a second. Okay, there, I've arranged everything back again. <laughs> uh, but there you go, that's how you do it. It's it's so nice. I really enjoy it. Um, even with that many rotations, um, that is actually faster than um, when I used my old swabs. Not that my old swabs were bad, they were good, but this is extremely effective. Um, so again, this is Cam Voyage um, 
by just another flute guy or Nicholas Flute, um, longtime follower, chat moderator, fantastic person. Um, basically, this is made by a flutist for flutists. So it is a fantastic, um, fantastic swap. It is it definitely my main swap now. I use it all the time. Um, yeah. So there you go. Uh, right. I think the, the other thing that I do is um, I take my pinky, uh, take a random part of the, of the swab, and then I stick my pinky into the lip hole so that I can wipe the riser. Um, if you don't do this, a lot of gunk can build up on the riser and it can actually impede your tone. Did you know that? <laughs> I did not know that for a very long time. Um, I adopted this little extra bit of cleaning um, when I was watching my student, actually my former student who um, works at Flute Center, I was watching him clean flutes. Um, and he, I watched him do this and I was like, wait a second, that's so smart. So I have adopted it in my cleaning just to make sure that there's no buildup uh, on the riser ever, so. You were today today years old when you learned when you knew when when you learned that you can you can wipe the riser. It's okay. Okay, I've been doing this for a really long time professionally, and I myself did not learn this until fall of twenty twenty one. Okay, so you know what? It's totally fine to be late to the party. Everything's great as long as you're enjoying the learning that's all that matters nothing else matters okay there's no race to the finish line because there is no finish line all right just like we're just here to have a great time that's all uh you do that with earbud and isopropyl alcohol yes yes that's very good um, i just don't use um, alcohol on my head joint because of the wood so yeah Hello, Felix. Too late again. It's okay. How are you? I'd love to stay a little bit to hear how you're doing. Um, you did not know that pinky action. Exactly. I didn't know that either. I did not know that until fall of 2021 when I watched my own former student do it. And I was like, wait a second. Wait a second. <laughs> I should do that too because I looked at my... Um, actually, I think he was doing it to my flute. Um, and I was just like, Hmm. Like maybe that's why your tone gets muffled after a while, you know, like if you don't clean it. Um, and so I asked him about it and he was like, yeah, it can actually just straight up muffle your sound a little. Like, you know, you'll feel like you have to push against it a lot more and, you know, yeah. Will I be making a video of the Seattle Flute Festival? I will certainly be bringing my camera. Um, I am, again, uh, I don't want to put people on camera if they don't want to be. Um, so I think I might just be like filming li little bits here and there. Um, and I'm not sure if what I film um, can be enough to turn into a vlog. Um, don't know. So um, I uh, will see how much footage I get. We don't know. Um, but yeah, I'll be bringing my camera at least. So, uh, you're doing quite fine, Felix. The thing with the riser, your flute, your flute technician told you to do it. See, flute technicians just know where it's at, you know? They know where it's at. They know what to do. They know what's what, all right? Uh, I kind of, like, I feel like if, if ever I, um, like, teach a course I've been thinking of this like if ever I get the opportunity to teach a course about like flute playing or uh, just you know flutey things I think it'd be so great to um bring in a flute technician to talk about their dream customers <laughs> like the customers that they have who really care for their flute like what should we do regularly to care for our flutes? Like, I think that'd be really cool to hear it from a flute technician's point of view and not just me telling you guys what to do. Like, I think that that would be really cool. 
she just said dude that's nasty yeah yeah there's a lot of grime that builds up there i think that it like i think it's partially skin dust lint um skin oils clumping up all those stuff together um and a whole bunch of other stuff um it is real nasty it is real nasty yeah an interview with your technician exactly exactly like i or with my technician i i would i would love that i mean like i kind of did it but we were mostly focusing on the actual coa with phil um owner of flute center so um and that ended up being an amazing video so yeah super gross it's super that that's why i do that that's why i do the pinky thing you know uh, or for example clean the rings of the keys with a q-tip yes yes you can absolutely do that i personally don't because i personally am a klutz and i feel like i'm going to knock springs out and i'm going to go too hard i'm very heavy-handed i know that you guys may or may not know this about me but i am a very heavy-handed person like i tend to do things with a little too much gusto um so i am afraid <laughs> i'm afraid of using q-tips because i have a very heavy hand personally but if you don't have a heavy hand um, i have seen flute technicians do that yeah I, I have a very heavy hand i i am not elegant i am very clumsy and klutzy and um i you know like Okay, like you guys are seeing me with like my cute earrings and stuff like that and looking all elegant today. Guys, I'm not. I am not elegant in the slightest. On my first date with John, I somehow like tripped over my own shoes and slipped out of them and tripped. <laughs> he had to somewhat like well, he, I caught myself before he had to catch me, but he had to kind of like be like, whoa, you know, and I was just like, don't worry about it. Don't worry about it. I, I just pulled a Cinderella. No worries. We're, we're good. And I just kept walking and he's just like somewhat standing there kind of bewildered. And then he caught up to me like laughing, but like, yeah, that's me. I'm, I'm not elegant. There's no part of me that's elegant. Yeah. So admitting is the true first step. It, see, indeed, indeed. So <laughs> how did you bend your flute? Oh, I was using a Q-tip. <laughs> yeah. So like, I know that flutists are very often seen as like, oh, we're very like elegant and we play a very elegant instrument, blah, blah, blah. Guys, I am not that person there i am not that person <laughs> i i am a complete clutch. like my legs are like littered with bruises because i run into things like i run into our bed all the time the bed doesn't move the bed that you know the bed's always there the bed's exactly where it's always been for the the entire like four and a half years that we have lived here the bed has not moved and i still run into it i will run into door handles I'll straight up run into walls um you know like when when i stir fry things things just fly out because i do it with a really heavy hand it, there is absolutely nothing elegant about me you know No shame in being weird and nerdy. That's me. So, you know. Uh. So after you were sick this year, you soaked up some cotton yarn and alcohol, fit it under the lip plate to disinfect it. That's great. I I, I, I hear that, that is, that's what you need to do. Um, the bed has not moved. Yes, it has. I'm, I'm, I'm sure. A hundred percent. No, dude. Like, I... The bed has not moved. The bed is still there. It's in the exact same spot. It's been there this entire time and I still run into it. You know, like I was washing my hands and I gouged into my own finger while washing my hands. 
I'm only washing my hands and I managed to gouge into my own finger. That's me. <laughs> oh, thank you. I do enjoy these earrings. I thought it would look good with this this uh, this outfit. Oh, you're so welcome, Michael. Um, but yeah, I also need to go. So um, thank you all so much for being here, um, for just being present and being so kind and generous with each other. And also thank you for the wonderfully nerdy conversations we had today. Uh, it really filled my cup and I hope it filled yours too. Please take care of yourselves uh, to the best of your abilities. Stay happy, healthy, and safe. Take care of yourselves because there's no music without the musician. Alrighty. Yes, I also knock my teeth into my lip plate all the time. Yeah. <laughs> it hurts more when it was metal doesn't hurt so much when, when it's wood but anyway love y'all so much later bye bye